Hey guys, Dean Mike here for another episode of Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. We're finally into the bonus levels of World 4, so we're gonna get started with that. We're gonna rock some relics. Today's episode is brought to you by Post Commentary. I managed to find a way to not save my original commentary that I recorded back when I initially did the video capture. So here you go. Also, I wanted to go ahead and give a big thank you to everybody that's been following along this series, Super Nintendo Sundays, and also Super Mario Galaxy. I've noticed a major uptick in views. That's definitely noticed, and it warms my heart. So thank you very much to everybody that's been following along. It's that kind of viewership that makes me want to keep going, and I know that producing content for everybody is just a hobby for now, but it definitely feels like people are starting to vibe with me as I am with you. So thank you everybody for watching. Continue to like the videos, comment on them if you want, and subscribe. It always helps the channel and the more growth I have in this channel, the more growth that I experience in my life. No, in seriousness though, it does make me continue to expand and think of ideas that I can do to make this channel bigger and better and provide more fun content and think of new ways to entertain all of you. So thanks everybody. So that was a bonus level. 4A isn't so bad. You get some Lockjaw's Cavern, Lockjaw's Lockdown. I don't even remember what the name of that level is, but it's probably my favorite song from DKC2, the sequel to Donkey Kong Country, featuring Diddy and Dixie, boyfriend and girlfriend. Noted now after 18 episodes. <laughs> but, yeah, this one's not too bad. There's lots of sharks in it. Not a huge fan of that. You can't kill sharks unless you have Cranky. So Cranky will waggle his big old stick at him and that's just enough to get those rascals to go away thankfully so yeah post commentary is not my favorite thing to do partially because it does require essentially rewatching everything you've done already so there's nothing special about it for me you watching the video that's your first time seeing it when i play these levels it's usually my first time playing them because I don't pre-play, almost never. I'll have a slight inclination to what I'm experiencing. Like I'll pop into it for like a second just to kind of refresh my memory. But usually I like to keep everything fresh and off the top of the dome. And to have good dome, you have to, you know, kind of do things your own way. Don't rely on the way that people are doing it. Plays your own trail. So this level is interesting. It has this weird bump mechanic, along with a huge emphasis emphasis on these robots. I don't quite know what those are supposed to symbolize, but I know that this little teeter totter is supposed to symbolize the adversity in my entire life. It's a perfect metaphor for my life, shifting back and forth, up and down, and around town. You just gotta go with the flow sometimes. That's kind of one of my key mantras. Now, a lot of this level, pretty standard. Not really too difficult, but these sea urchins, as you'll see in a moment, are pretty tricky. Those big blue balls will certainly come back to provide me a lot of discomfort. You just wait. And it seems for some reason that in these levels by Dixie, that the game likes to just throw out a bunch of puzzle pieces and then it's not like they're necessarily too hard to find. But I guess that's good maybe. Have a mix of kind of tricky ones as well as easier fun. Oop. <laughs> not even close. Swing and a miss. So maybe some more tricky ones to find like that one. 
How many of you spotted that barrel before I did? That's a tricky one too. This game is also causing me paranoia in certain moments because I'm like freaking out that I'm not going to be able to find something. But then again, why would I do that? All I have to do is go back and replay a, a level in an episode four or five times. Problem solved. Easy. Now, if that bonus doesn't give you anxiety, I don't know what does. That one definitely makes me freak out. It's definitely... Especially when you have somebody that's playing with you. Ooh. That one is of the utmost difficulty, trying to land back in the barrel and get to time it together. If you don't, then it'll start a timer. And it wastes precious moments with the three camp. I get to the point too where like I spend a lot of time just kind of backtracking to these areas to make sure that I am going where I need to be. Puts me in harm's way a lot too. That shirk is not messing around, I tell you what. But yeah, there's this like electricity slash robot theme. And I don't I don't quite get it. I know the lore of Donkey Kong is very mysterious and vast. But I guess it's just it's too intense for my small monkey brain. I just don't get it. But yeah, if you do bring Cranky into this level, he will help you out. You can use the cane function when you're underwater. That if you're not swimming, you can swat. Swat and swim. It's a new perfect exercise program for senior citizens on the weekends. I do love, though, that they incorporated different elements of Lockjaw's Cavern into the song, like the accordion. I believe that's what this instrument is. That's what it sounds like. Who doesn't love a good accordion, you know? As we're being slowly sucked into the currents with these, I think, are these urchins? And then what are the other ones? What are the above ground ones? Because these are definitely urchins, I think. Angry underwater purple boys just hanging out. can't imagine stepping on those. I've seen pictures of people online having stepped on that, and I'm just like, nope, nope. Do not like. Where am I going? Who knows? In these levels, it does not hurt to consider potentially bringing along with you a blue bubble. Those are the ones that will give you the extra oxygen. I don't think that there are really too many water he heavy levels to this extent for the rest of the game. So this one and the, and the next one will be the last two aside from the, the boss. The K level, once again, is a temple run. So you don't have to worry about that. But this one in 4B, or not 4B, are underwater heavy focused. Now I was going to make a joke about seesaws, but I made it a little bit too early. This is this is the seesaw that you need to really pay attention to. You got to collect all the bananas on both seesaws as they appear or roll into an owl and kill yourself. Whatever works, you do you. Yeah, you can even hear the uh, the electricity like charging in the background every time that that thing pops the platform up and down. I don't quite know what it means. But yeah, these <laughs> these seesaws are really hard to stay on. The momentum of the seesaw itself, plus Donkey Kong slipping from potentially maybe there's rain physics, pretty tricky. So you can't do it on your first try like I always do. Don't be too hard on yourself. It's fine. Take your time. Pace yourself. Fail to get on the seesaw multiple times as you jump through the air. <laughs> yeah, this is not, this is not ideal. You almost have to jump onto it a little bit further back 
doing that will give you a little bit of space to kind of collect yourself just like that. That way you won't fall. It's about the midway point of each seesaw that things will become pretty difficult. That's when it starts to slip and slide. Anybody remember slip and slides? Those are always fun. I remember as a kid at the summer camp I went to and eventually worked at, we had a dedicated slip and slide that we always would bust out when the uh, weather was hot and we wanted to have a water day. Let's go ahead and get a companion though, a Kong companion here for what we're about to do. This little area is, I don't know if you can see it, but up above there's a secret exit for some reason. I don't know why, because doing this level automatically unlocks 4B, so it is what it is, but yeah, you have to bonk off that owl and then grab that vine all while dodging these big balls. So good luck. It's really tough to do. And as you're about to see, I'm going to probably burn through quite a few of my <laughs> my Kong companions. Going through and keeping a healthy stack of those barrels, by the way, for K levels is what I usually do, but it doesn't hurt to have it happen for a regular level. So, don't feel ashamed. You gotta do what you gotta do. But uh, yeah, so slip and slides. We had a dedicated one at the camp and it was a lot of fun. You can even make it extra crazy and put like a little bit of Dawn dish soap on it. The only downside to that, it does reduce the friction so you can get even crazier slides, is that you get soap in your face and in your eyes. So let's go ahead and try to remove these Balls? Nope. Okay, that was a waste. That's fine. We'll have to do it the old-fashioned way. I love a good old-fashioned. There was one summer, though, when we were setting up said slip and slide. Well, I was not. I was not in charge of the water sports, but somebody had set it up, and the spot that they had set it up over was not too far from where there was a root of a tree. I have no idea how they didn't notice this, but it had kind of extended into the grassy area where we were. Thankfully, I was not the first person to try said, oh boy, to try said water slide, or slip and slide, but hmm, had a couple injuries that day. It was not fun. We did reposition it though to save everybody's lives. But yeah, it was a good time. I mean, you can honestly, slip and slides are so great because of a type of of what they kind of stand for of what they what, what does a water what does the slip and slide believe in um so you can use cranky by the way to slap these balls around just a moment we'll demonstrate that he's all hates spiky things you can use them to bounce on the balls which if you can time it right it's a perfect thing to do However, that would require being good at this game. Alas, I am not, therefore you will not see that sort of gameplay here today. But anyway, you can make a slip and slide out of pretty much anything that is exactly a trash bag and a hose. So take one of those big black trash bags, cut it lengthwise, spread that bad boy out, maybe find a way to stick it into the ground if you have like some vampire steaks or something I don't know whatever you got and then throw some water and maybe a little bit of soap if you hate being able to see perfect there you go slip and slide achieved and if you do wind up doing that and hurting yourself I am not responsible therefore uh, I, I would appreciate you and all of your con all of your kin not coming after D-Mike Industries for the good part of that idea and not the bad parts. So I will take credit for any and all fun that you have, not the injury part. Because here at D-Mike Industries, we basically believe in not hurting yourself. Problem solved. Just if you think you might be hurting yourself, do not hurt yourself. So this is a very tricky, unnecessarily tricky jump. There it is, though. First try, honestly. Pretty impressive. 
But you know what that means? Because we finished the level and we didn't get everything. Oh boy. We are coming right back because we'd be con artists if we didn't. So almost a nice amount of puzzle pieces. Almost. Not quite. We got more work to do, guys. And there it is. 4B. Unlocked. I don't know... I think that's the only way to unlock it. And then... Oh, you know, I don't know. You'll see in a moment that by finishing the level the normal way, for us normies, it, uh... It just unlocks the path to the left. So, I don't know. I would assume... You know, I'm not a game designer once again. Full disclosure, crazy. But in my head, I would put together the thought that in my shallow brain, I would put together the thought that the secret exit would unlock something else. And then the regular exit would get you 4B, but I don't know. It's just the way that they're gonna do it and we're just gonna roll with it. We're not trying to rock that boat or cause any sort of commotion. But because we have most everything so far, we can just get back to the spot that we were at and hunt for the remaining two puzzle pieces. That was a tactical damage roll. Don't worry. And in this episode, there will be a few potential banana slash banana coins slash lives inconsistencies. I realized that when I was making this content the first time around, that the recording that I'd made, I like to usually keep in the failed attempts, so that way you can see that fighting through adversity is a part of all of our lives. It's more of a, a lesson for life, really, to help all of you viewers. I'm not a model citizen or anything, but it's the least I can do to help keep everybody on the straight and narrow. So in this episode, I do collect a puzzle piece right there, but I also realize that the upcoming level that immediately precedes this one, 4B, is a little confusing with the way that I originally made it. It's kind of a mess. So I kind of trimmed it down. Also, that's a very sneaky puzzle piece. Make sure you don't hit the bing bong barrel first. I realized that the, um, yeah, it's a little confusing the way that I did it. So I just went and kind of cut the fluff out. There is still, I think, a couple mistakes that I made that I did leave in. Perfection be darned, but overall, I tried to keep it relatively concise for the shoal atoll. Yeah, this level is weird. Not in a bad way. I know that weird can have negative connotations. Negative, but I like to think of it as different. So this specific level is something I've never seen before in a Donkey Kong game. This jump is first off, something that I've never seen in a Donkey Kong game. You gotta get to the middle where the bunch is. Collect all the swirling bananas. Swirl around that banana. Blah, puzzle piece. That one's kind of tricky to do. So this is a, as I run into the wall, this is a level that has a kind of labyrinth mechanic that I don't know if this exists in other Donkey Kong games. I haven't thoroughly played through two and three in a long time. Can't go down that way. Can't go in that back door. I haven't played two and three in a long time and it's been a, a while since I've played Donkey Kong Country Returns, the prequel to this one. But you get more Lockjaw's Cavern, which is nice. You get some Aquatic Ambience. We start with Aquatic Ambience. So the first two songs in this episode are two of my favorite water songs from Donkey Kong Country. So in this specific level, we're all about finding the key. You have to find five keys for some reason. I don't know in what world this mechanic made sense, but you gotta find five keys. You gotta find a bonus level up to your left. Don't skip that. And each key unlocks 
the color designation that you see on it. You have to make sure you physically touch it. The key does not just get put into your inventory because you open the chest. People these days don't want to do the work. You have to actually touch the key in order for it to count. So don't forget that. Don't forget to get all the bananas here. This is a little anxiety inducing, I'm sure. But don't worry, you're in good hands with D-Mike clothes. There you go. And this is one of those levels that is pretty infuriating with the way that it's set up. Not so bad with the keys and, you know, finding the key that matches the color of the chest. That's fine. You get a free air refill each time, which is nice. So now that we have the red key, open the red chest, green key, open the green chest, rinse and repeat. However, the downside to this level, as you'll soon see, which is very annoying, is the way that this is handled. So you don't immediately encounter the green chest, so be mindful of that. You still gotta do a little hunting. Not a super hard puzzle, so don't worry about that. Don't forget to tab onto that chest and get yourself the third puzzle piece. But all this underwater shenaniganery that you have to do, and it has to be done while you can still breathe. Breathing apparently is still important in the Donkey Kong game. I thought they phased out the mechanic of breathing, but apparently not. You gotta do it. But yeah, make sure you touch every single key. In this specific level, once you are getting the keys, that you have to get them in the attempt that you make it. There's no checkpoints, which is great. Don't you love that? No checkpoints. There are these overhead kind of ceiling compartments that will drop down if you have all the bananas around them collected. Skip the second one. There's some mines in there. Not the kind on Valentine's Day. Don't be mine. You don't want that. So we're gonna swim up in this big old hole. This is the correct way to go. Yeah, the breathing mechanic, I get it, obviously. It adds a little bit of realism to this incredibly realistic game, but I could do without it. It's just kind of a bit of an annoyance more than anything. Don't care for it. But you get to hang out with some puffer fish, which is fun. Probably the last time we'll see puffer fish in this world, I would imagine. I like that their spikes when they come out, they make a little sword unsheathing sound, which is funny if you think about it. Not to destroy your immersion, plug your ears if you don't want to have your immersion destroyed about medieval weaponry. But uh, one of the things that I always find to be quite funny is that in shows, medieval shows or, you know, anything where somebody is going to be having knights in there unsheathing a sword from a big scabbard that they've got tied around their waist. It always makes me laugh when it makes that big shing sound because most scabbards were made out of cloth or leather. And if you've ever let Diddy die because you forgot to get air, and we're about to see what happens when you don't get air and you can't because there's none in this room. So we're being chased by a big shirk. We get the final purple key and then we bite it. So we're gonna come back. We're gonna try that again. Ignore the discrepancy in anything you see that is abnormal. Don't worry about it. But anyway, as I was saying, yeah, those are made out the the holder for the weapon that they would have around their waist was cloth or leather. So when you pull that out, it wouldn't make a, an anything sound. Like, have you ever dried a, a knife off with a towel? Does it sound like shing? No, unless you have a metal towel or you're, for some reason, doing your dishes with aluminum foil. I don't recommend that. I still don't think it would make that sound. But here is the crux of this level and why it's annoying. Every time, 
every time that you do this level. This was, this specifically, I, I don't know if this is unnecessary or not, but every time that you do this level, if you don't finish it, or you back out of it, you have to do the entire puzzle every single time. So, there were a few attempts in the middle of this level that I did, which I realized was kind of spinning the wheels a little bit. I thought I even needed to go do this, but I didn't. Those were arbitrary and unnecessary. And they didn't really add much to the episode, so I went ahead and trimmed the fat. I filleted the fish. The fish fillet. I think it's really funny that one of the things that's really popular as a food item is around certain times of year, obviously, is the fish fillet from McDo's, McDonald's. And I believe that the fish fillet was put into popularity for the folks who ascribe to the Catholic Church. There you go, we swatted that eel. We, we stroked the eel with our big cane, wonderfully done. So yeah, the Catholic Church, they don't eat beef, I think, or other kinds of meat on uh, certain days of the week. I think it's like Fridays. Maybe that's what is it, like a Friday fish fry. I like the alliteration. But yeah, they didn't. they don't eat beef on those days, I think. Maybe it's during Lent or just in general, I don't know. Might have my facts a little screwy, but... It popularized the fish fillet. Pretty good. If you're into that. I can't say I've ever had one. I'm not really much of a fish sandwich kind of guy. But in the past, when I've been to restaurants that specialize in the old seafood, which I don't frequent very often, not much of a seafood guy. The closest you'll get is me sticking my tongue out after I've chewed something. That's the best seafood you're going to get. But it seems like those places have like a fish and chips kind of special, which for those of you who don't know what that is, it's like a breaded white fish, cod, potentially. That seems to be a really popular one. I don't know if I could name any of the others. So let's hope that it's all cod. And then some kind of thick cut french fries known as chips. Some fish and chips. That's a really horrible British accent. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'd like an, an order of fish and chips. That's probably one of the worst things I've ever done. And for those of you in the UK that just heard that, I am so sorry. It's not you, it's me. So you get the fish, you get the chips, maybe some malt vinegar. I can already tell we're gonna be doing this level again because Mr. D-Mike forgot something. So in between level takes, what I did, which was not the smartest thing, is I backed out of the level. And when you back out of any level like I've shown you before, it resets your progress. You finish the level, saves it. But if you don't, you gotta do it all over again. So unfortunately, just for one puzzle piece. You best believe that we're doing the shoulder toll advanced, super hardcore, only for the most intelligent people on earth puzzle. I know that that's like, it's a way for them to kind of preserve the mechanic within the level. Also what? Did he say Takis? Like the spicy tortilla chip things? I like those, but I can't really eat them. You know, as I get older, I've noticed that, and this is probably common sense, biologically, but as I've gotten older, my palate has changed in a much more kind of sensitive way. When I was a kid, I could have my entire day be meals of pizza rolls and Doritos the Chewy Chips Ahoy cookies, which I know are very controversial, the red ones. But I like them. I like them better than the crispy ones. It's not a hell I would die on. I'm not really much of a chocolate chip cookie person. But, yeah, I don't really eat cookies a lot in general. Girl Scout cookies are good. Good organization, good cookies. 
but in general, I found that I could eat whatever I wanted back then, you know? I didn't really have to worry about it. I unfortunately inherited a very sensitive stomach, thanks mom and dad. And so as I've gotten older, I've had to kind of be more careful. I don't, but I've had to try to be more careful with the things that I eat and drink. So there's the puzzle piece that I did get earlier, but I backed out of the level, so you have to re-get it, which is super fun. This level is incredible, so why not play through it four or five times? There was a lot that I cut out of this episode, so it's definitely more manageable now, but it wasn't. So you're welcome. Being mindful, thinking of your Saturdays when this goes up. I don't, I don't want to keep you away from your friends and your family, from your cookouts and your bonfires and your slip and slides over top of tree roots. It's all about being mindful. Take care of yourselves. But anyway, thanks for watching. Anyway, 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 anyway. So that's one of those things that I think about when I go to the store. Let's go ahead and get rid of two of these puffer fish and completely waste that. When I go to the store and I see something kind of new and fun, some sort of culinary experience, and I'm like, I want to try that. That looks awesome. And then I try it, and then the next day my body's like, mm -mm -mm, you should not have done that. Not ideal. Takis are an example. They're kind of like flaming Hot Cheetos, sort of, but like, almost worse. I don't know what the crazy powder is that they saturate those bad boys in. Take that, Mr. Shark, you bonk him on the nose. Also, myth, there's that thought that you can, uh, if you're being attacked by a shark, to bonk it on the nose. No, don't do that. Apparently it doesn't do anything. You know what's the best thing to do if you're being encountered by a shark? Swim away. Or have a gun with you in the water. And blast it! Don't you carry your harpoon gun? But yeah, Takis will always upset my stomach and like turn my tongue a nasty red color. Not a fan. But anyway, that was level 4B, 4A. We'll be taking on the K level and the boss next time. Thanks for watching, everybody. I've been Dean Mike. This has been Duncan Country Tropical Freeze. And I'll see you later. Bye.